Good morning, everyone. So good to see you in the house of our Lord today. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. As our worship team leads us in the experience of the presence of God, Brother Wesley is going to be our acolyte. Remember, the symbolism is the lighting of the candles represents the light of Christ. And then when we extinguish the candles at the end of the service, it's the idea that we take the light with us to the world in which we live. Can we all say amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together, if you will. Worship team, please lead us. say amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you so much for it was at the cross 
where I first saw the light. Father, thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, for our lives. In your holy name we pray. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue our tradition of having the children right up front. Do we have any little ones that I can share with today? Guys, do you all mind coming up? Let me share my story with you. All righty. Hey there, darling. Come on up. Good to see you. Let's just sit right up here. Right up here, okay? Sound good? Good to see you. All righty. You're getting close to that candy bag, aren't you there? <laughs> hey, big man. Good to see you. All right, now, congregation, you all know, and young folks, we got to put our hands up like this and say long, long, long time ago. You ready? Long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wifflacoochee River, Reverend Bullywink Bullfrog. Anybody know what a bullfrog says? Rivet, 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 rivet. Exactly. Well, exactly. I like that. That's even better. Well, they were outside of their church. See, it was an outside church. And they had a big round bucket. Can you do this? Can you do it like that? Real round bucket. And all the critters from all around would drop in their money in that bucket outside because the church was reaching out to everybody. You didn't even have to come to that church. They were reaching out to everybody. It was wonderful. It's really what church should be all about. So in that process, when that was happening, happening, something interesting took place. Miss Turkey, let me see you act like a turkey. Can you act like a turkey? You got gobble, can you do a turkey? You can do a turkey there? Gobble, 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 gobble. She came up and she just put two kernels of corn, two little, like two pennies in the offering plate. And when she did, Rollo the rabbit started rolling on the ground. That's why they called him Rollo. Rolling on the ground, laughing. Have you ever heard a rabbit laugh? Yeah, exactly. Can you do it again? How does a rabbit laugh? <laughs> I like that very much. Bullywing said, hey, wait a minute now. He said, she's putting in the, probably the most she has. So Rollo said, you know what? You're right. And I'm going to find her and I'm going to give her some Rollo candy. Anybody ever eat this kind of candy? Ooh, you're going to like this. You're going to like this. Yeah, there's more in there too, but I'm going to put this over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. I've got it. I'm going to let you carry it in a minute. Rollo, she said, oh, my goodness gracious, I think I'll give her some candy. And Bullywink said, you know what? He said, we are the church. Have y'all heard that song before? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together, all of God's critters all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. You know that? Y'all sing that with me. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together, all of God's critters all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Did you know you're the church? You're the one that shares the love of God. You knew that. You know what? There's another one doing it. You put your hand together like this. You ever done that? Here's the church. There's the steeple. You open the door. All the people. Or you can do it like this. Here's the church. There's the steeple. Nothing in there. Everybody's online. <laughs> you want some Rollo candy? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. We are your church. Help us to share your love with each other. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go to Sunday school. Miss Pat's over there. Can you carry this over there to her? It's heavy. Let's go that direction, big guy. All righty. <laughs> oh. Hey, Derek. Good to see you, my man. Hey there, young lady. Miss Ingrid. Miss Ingrid's going to give us our announcements for the day. Sorry the candy went that direction, guys. You may change your mind here in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry I got caught in the traffic jam there. Um, good morning. Bless blessings this morning. What a beautiful day after all that rain yesterday. <clears throat> all right, are there any visitors today? Try to pay more attention. Um, would you like to um, stand and tell us who you are and where you're from, please. Well, you don't have to stand, you can just tell us. Hello, 
Oh, well, welcome to Florida. Oh, well, welcome. Welcome to our church. Oh, good morning. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you for coming. All right. Calendar of events and our prayer concerns are on the table in the narthex. If anyone did not pick up their communion cup, um, if you could please raise your hand and someone will bring one to you if you need it. So we have one couple of them. Yep. I'll go on. Here's the announcements. Jim will bring it to you. Thank you, Jim. All, right. All the Bible studies will take place this week. Tuesday at 1 p.m. in the sanctuary will be a meeting of the communion stewards. All Easter flowers must be ordered and paid for this Sunday so they can make sure that we have them for the service. Um, the future information, we will have a cantata on March 28th at the 11 a.m. service. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we will have a dramatization of the Lord's Supper. Do you know what time the services are going to be those days? Thursday and noon on Friday. Thank you. So 6 o'clock for Monday, Thursday, and noon on Good Friday. On April 9th and April 10th will be an in-house men's retreat, and sign-up will be available soon. So, Becky, <laughs> please help me welcome Becky Perry for a few words about the summer youth camp. And I know my kids look forward to doing this every year. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, I'm Becky Perry, and along with my husband Bill, who's in the sound booth right now, and Laura and Josh Wetton, um, we're the leaders of the youth group on Wednesday nights. We're all basically new members here at Denellen First United Methodist Church, and we all have a passion for youth, to both know, for them to both know and experience God's love for each of them. This is why I'm here with you this morning. Uh, just with a show of hands, how many of you uh, attended church camp as a youngster? Oh, okay, a few, but um, I certainly did and um, loved it so very much. Uh, when I asked our kids this past Wednesday what they liked best at camp, whoa, I'm in the spotlight now. Um, Jacob, Jacob Peebles answered right away, that's easy, the praise songs. We sang so loud that by the end of the week we had no voice left. Laura shared that her son, Sam, right here, who wasn't able to make because he was in basket. How did you do? Uh, he didn't make it. Was, OK, was, all right, we won't want to. OK. <laughs> he loved the singing, but also loved the fact that he could talk openly about Jesus and not be judged about his faith. The reason? Warren Willis is a Christian camp. Since the summer of 1949, Warren Willis United Methodist Church Camp and Conference Center have been creating amazing Christ-centered experiences for children and youth on the shore of Lake Griffin. Camp has changed a lot over the years, but their objectives remain the same. And here are some of them. To help campers know Jesus Christ as Savior and as a friend, to help campers better understand their role as members of the church and disciples of God, to encourage campers to find ways to engage their faith in their own communities, to help campers learn how to live with and appreciate themselves and others, to encourage campers to appreciate God's wonderful world and their responsibility to the environment and to offer campers the opportunity to build relationships with Christian youth from all, all around. They do all of this through the activities they do throughout each day. Some of these activities include crafts, disc golf, creative worship, archery, ceramics, sailing, water games, and so much more. The staff at Warren Willis have experienced Camp Ministry Professionals leads a team of dedicated young adult Christians as they work to show Christ to each camper that passes through their gates. Also, their program 
is accredited by the American Camp Association because of their dedication to safety and quality, which is especially important now with COVID. Our church here in Dunellen is committed to sending children to camp, knowing that it is a wonderful, perhaps life-changing experience. I know of youth, I think we all do, know of youth who have given their lives to Jesus because of camp. This year, the camp dates run from June 14th through July 31st. Each camp week begins on Monday afternoon and ends on Saturday morning, and there are three age levels. And starting this year, we are inviting the fourth graders, the ones who will be going into fourth grade, um, to come as well. So elementary camp begin with those going into fourth in the fall, middle school camp and high school camp, which um, ending with the uh, graduating seniors of 2021. If you're interested in having your children or grandchildren participate in this overnight Christian-based camping experience, please stop at the table in the Narthex after the service for a packet full of information plus registration and scholarship paperwork. One last thing, we need this paperwork back as soon as possible because we've received, we will, we can receive scholarships from Warren Willis, but it's on a first come first serve basis. We also have church scholarships available. We want to see every child who wants to attend camp be able to go. Thank you. Very much, and our young folks representing our group. That's fantastic. Who's going to read our scripture today? Is that Brother Wesley? Yes. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Wes. We've got, you know, we've got you doing an alkalite, reading the scripture. We're going to have to put you on staff, my man. Deja vu. Oh, wait, no, I didn't get When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sit, sitting at tables exchanging money. So he had made a whip out of cords and dro drove all from the temple courts, booths, sheep, and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jewish answer, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. For a word of God for the people of God. God. Thank you, Wes. You're wearing many hats today. Thank you. Yes, we may do that. <laughs> if you have your calendar of events, and again, if you didn't pick up one today, try to remember that when you come in each Sunday. They're always in the table to the left, as Ms. Ingrid said, out front there. And on the back side is our prayer concern. So those of you that have that, if you want to turn that over, we do have some prayers to uh, add to that. Um, I want to begin, though, on a very special prayer before we have Brother Bobby uh, pray for our church, and that is uh, we have uh, a couple that's joining our church today. They actually have joined, and uh, we've not had the opportunity to recognize them, so I want us just to have a, a minute of prayer for them. They're from up north here a couple months out of the year, um, and they have asked to uh, come in as full members at our church, and we gladly receive them. These are dear friends of Irene Bruce. And uh, Jack and Shar, uh, Hout Cooper, where are you? Jack and Shar, if you can stand for a moment. Oh, right there. Would y'all mind standing for a minute? And let's just welcome them as members of our church. Please remain standing for just a moment. Let's just pray for them. Father, I thank you so much for sending Jack and Shar our way. Dear Lord, we believe that folks don't come by chance here. Every one of you that are here today, we believe that the Holy Spirit leads you. And we ask that our church would be a blessing to this dear couple. And may the fruit of their ministry be a blessing to thy glory and through us as well. And may all of God's people say, 
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There is a packet at the Welcome Center with your names on it. And uh, so if you'd pick that up when you, when you leave today. We have a couple folks to lift up in prayer, and then we'll have Brother Bobby to lead us in prayer. Cynthia Carroll. Um, had surgery and she is at home and we pray that the good Lord will continue to take care of her. Joyce Brummett uh, has surgery coming up and we ask that the Holy Spirit would be with her. She's had a number of surgeries uh, and so we're just trusting the good Lord will just wrap his arms around her. Joyce Brummett. Uh, we found out this week Sam Watson. I mentioned um, uh, I think in our midweek service uh, they had found cancer. His Dear wife works with our forget-me-nots, and uh, uh, her dad is John Eisenman. Many of you know John, um, but they just found out um, uh, found out Friday that Sam's cancer is encased just in the prostate. They were afraid it was a variety of places, so they were happy for that. And he begins his treatments now on the <clears throat> prostate. So if you can pencil in Sam's name. And trust the good Lord to take care of him as well. Bert Winslow, we have a prayer quilt out in the narthex for him. And uh, he had a heart attack, was at home, ended up back in the hospital. So if you can keep Bert uh, in your prayers. And then last night, we found out that Jim, Jimmy Lofton, who's on our security team, uh, was in the hospital. Ingrid, who shared our announcements a few moments ago, uh, made a contact there uh, through Facebook, saw that he had posted that uh, he had had a heart attack and, uh, and that uh, his note on there was that they had removed a large blockage yesterday and put in the balloon and two stents as well. And so uh, we want to keep Jim in our, our prayers. He is supposed to be coming home today. Uh, John Taylor contacted his son and found out that he is coming home today. So keep him in your prayers. Jim is the one that's been bringing donuts. Those of you that work behind the scenes there. And there won't be any donuts today. I know that'll be an uprising. But uh, we can sure be in prayer. Uh, Jim blesses us every week with those as he covers us in security as well. And I do have one last announcement, um, and that's for prayer, but it's an, an update on the United Methodist Church denomination. Just a simple statement for your prayer that general conference has been postponed to 2022, but there is now a shortened conference May the 8th of this year to cover a few areas of concern, few items that keeps the United Methodist wheels turning in the present time. And there is a move to try to add to those items um, the protocol, which is the name of the program trying to help uh, conservatives and uh, the traditional part of the church to be able to branch out and, and form a new vibrant uh, Orthodox conservative church. They're trying to get that on the docket and they have to reach every delegate around the globe with a two thirds vote. So please be in prayer. That's, that's going on now. That's an undertaking that has begun. And so we'll keep you posted in the next couple of weeks, how that has developed. I know that you have personal prayer requests. You can drop them in the offering plate when you leave today and they will go on our email prayer chain. Brother Bobby, can you come at this time and uh, Miss Lori, and, and uh, bless us as, as we seek the Lord in prayer. Hold these in your hands, if you will. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> I want to thank all of you um, once again for uh, being a part of our church, um, being a part of this service today. Thank all of the visitors here. Uh, May God continue to smile upon you. Um, there's a number of churches that you should have chosen, but we're so grateful to have you today. We want to thank God for all of you that's tuning in online, uh, worshiping um, us today. <clears throat> it's a privilege to be here. Uh, His mercy and grace just allowed us to get up this morning. Amen. Still in our right mind, we still have our health and strength. By the goodness of God, we ask that you keep those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up um, close to your hearts. Keep them on your mind. Um, keep Jim on your mind. We ask that if someone feel like it during this prayer, to just stand in the gap for Jim. Um, and he, he will certainly appreciate it. 
Uh, with that being said, we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Oh, Father, once again, we, we come to you, Father, in different circumstances. But, Father, we come seeking you today. Father, we come running, walking. Father, to, to enter your arms that are open wide. Father, we thank you for your grace in this place. Father, sh let your light shine on us today. Father, let us feel your presence. Father, those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up. Father, all of those names are all of your children that you created. Father, you created them in your image. Father, help them and all of us to be a lot like ourselves. Oh, Father, be more like you. Father, that would change the nation in more ways than one. Father, we say amen today because we have a voice. We say amen today because of who you are. Oh, Father, let your mercy rain down from the heavens. Father, let it cleanse us from the, oh, the top of our heads to the sole of our feet. Father, go in the sick room today. Father, there's someone in a hospital that needs you right now. There's someone in a nursing home, in a rehab center, drug center, AA center. Oh, Father, they need you right now. Father, that habit they that had, only you could take it away. Father, if only they just asked. Father, your word said ask, and it shall be given. Father, if we continue to seek you, oh, we'll find you. We just got to accept you when we do. Father, those that are going through surgery, oh, Father God, the doctor's hands today. Those that are traveling, those that are flying, oh, Father, be their pilot. Father, let them have a safe trip wherever their destination may be. But, but Father, today in this church, Father, look on it today. Father, look on our conference. Father, help them make the decisions that's going to be positive for all of those that are involved. Oh, Father, we know that no weapon form shall prosper. But, Father, we keep lifting you up. Father, you'll deliver as you had delivered more than one time. Oh, Father, we, we know that there will be times like this. But, Father, your word said you put no more on us than we could bear. Father, our church, thank you for the guidance. Father, we thank you for the attendance. Father, we thank you for our, our guest today. Oh, Father, bless them as you've blessed them already. Father, keep them as you have kept them already. Father, look on our pastor today. Father, continue to, oh, Father, continue to, to keep blessing him as he's blessed us. Father, we thank you for the word. Because, Father, that's what we're standing on. Standing on the truth. Father, as we continue to worship today, Father, we ask that your blessing be upon us. Father, we thank you for our worship team, for the voices. Father, we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Father, as they come, Father, we're going to give you some glory today. Yeah. Father, what the devil meant for evil, yeah. we're going to get some glory out of it. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your healing. You. Father, Brother Dale walked in today. Father, we thank you for him. Amen. Father, he's come through another surgery. Amen. Father, by your grace, by your stripes, Father, he's healed. Father, we thank you for little Ellie. Amen. Father, as she continued to improve, Amen. Father, be with her on this journey. Father, she don't walk it alone. But, Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, and, Father, the song that we're going to be singing today. Father, that song is written by one of your members here. Father, as she tune in online, Father, we say thank you for her today. Father, keep allowing her to keep writing songs of worship. Father, one heart. 
one mind. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's all rise, if you will, in our prayer team behind the altar. And I want to agree with what Bobby said. If anyone wants to continue to come and stand in the gap for like Jim and just kneel or stand at the altar and others around you that know Jim, same thing for Sam and for Joyce and maybe others, please consider that during the time that our worship team leads us in prayer. We thank you once again for today. Father, for this communion Sunday. Father, it was your son that died for all of our sins, that we should have a right to the tree of life. Father, you said, take thee and drink and remember me. Father, how can we forget for all that you've done? Father, we could never repay you. But Father, today, we say thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Father, that's who you are. Father, you're a way maker. In the hospitals, you're a miracle worker. Father, to all of us, you are a promise keeper. That is who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team and band. Praise the Lord. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Title of the message this morning, to prepare, prepare our hearts for communion. And I love the Methodist tradition that communion is open to all. So hopefully you did pick up uh, one of the chalices, uh, and the, we passed them around earlier if you didn't get one. But if you're thinking, well, I'm not a member of the church, I shouldn't have one, that's just not the tradition of Methodism. Uh, it is an open table, and uh, just love that that concept will stay with us for eternity until we get to the other side. The idea, friends, is that you uh, have a right to receive the sacrament in the Lord's eyes. Um, and so I hope that you'll share that with us here in just a few moments, and our young folks will come back over uh, to participate with us. And if you're a parent or a grandparent and had one of the little ones, that's up to you. Uh, we're, we're very glad to give them their sacrament, but you decide whether you feel like they're ready to receive that. Um, but we are more than glad to share that uh, with them, the young folks. It's a, a time of family and gathering in the Lord's table and enjoying His presence. Can we all say Amen. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer again. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you and to draw close to you. We give you praise and glory. This is an interesting passage of scripture that we have today, Lord, and it has spoken to my heart the last couple of weeks, and I pray that it will now speak to everyone here and those online as well, that your spirit would just speak to them uh, with a message, I think a, a prophetic message in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Title of the message is Jesus with a whip. <laughs> now, I don't, that sounds strange, doesn't it? You know, I don't, I picture Jesus with the lamb around his neck or playing with the children, but Jesus with a whip, you know, but that's what this passage talks about. And the one we're looking at today or beginning with is John chapter two that Wesley read to you a few moments ago. So some of you may uh, open your Bibles back up to look at that or your tablet or your phone. You're more than welcome to do that. But I'm going to jump around from that passage to the other gospels that talk about um, Jesus cleansing that temple as well. That's something that's lifted up in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the story of Jesus cleansing this temple. So we're pulling the text from John, but um, there's other parts of the story going on that you would not realize if all you had was the Gospel of John. And praise the Lord, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four different authors giving their aspects, filled with the Holy Spirit. They probably saw things that uh, others didn't see. Remember, we have mentioned before they're writing to different audiences so they're trying to focus on certain areas to try to bring them to the lordship of Jesus Christ and it's not that one is right and one is wrong it's the fulfillment of the four gospels uh, to share what has taken place in the time of Jesus and it gives us inspiration and hope now when I thought about the whip uh, I remembered back immediately as a little boy, I got in trouble one time. I know that surprised you. Only one time in my life as a little boy got into trouble and I uh, was probably in first grade and trouble at school and, and, uh, and my dad was upset. And so as I'm going home, uh, and I may have mentioned this to you before, my cousin was in the car with me and she was my age, a little girl, and I think it was first grade and she was just singing all the way home, you know, Eddie's gonna get a whip and Eddie's gonna to get a whip. And now, before my dad went on to glory, I asked him, I said, do you remember that? And he said, yes. I said, did you give me a whipping? Now, back in the day, now I know that the things are different today, you know, but um, uh, we, at my age, uh, we, we received um, some interesting discipline from our parents and from schools uh, as well. I know a lot of that is not what the way things are done today, but but I did receive that. But dad said, he said, son, I don't remember that at all. Now, I don't remember the consequences. Dad doesn't remember the consequences. So that's scary to me. I, I think I blacked out or something like that. You know, I, I'm not really sure. But I got into trouble because I had done something wrong. Okay. So and that's what the concept of the whip, whipping uh, was all about. Okay. Now, saying that, Jesus comes into the temple 
and he cleanses the temple. Now, we must understand right to begin with that it's not because they're selling animals. You know, I've had a lot of people over the years say, well, this passage, we shouldn't be selling anything at church. Shouldn't have the United Methodist women dinners or the men's dinners or selling tickets to the, so the kids can go to the, the youth camp, you know. And, but that's not what this passage is about. And the, the way you understand that is you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about what's going on here. Jesus seems to be very upset with them turning not the house of God into a place where they were buying and selling because there was a purpose for that, but they were cheating the people. They were taking advantage of them. People had come a long distance, and remember it was in the sacrificial system. They had to bring animals to sacrifice to God. That was part of their, their way of worship, and people that came a long distance could not bring their animals, so they'd have to buy them there. That was a good thing, and then they could offer those animals, the doves or whatever it may be, for their sacrifice, but since they had to buy them there, then they could charge them whatever they wanted to charge them. And they charge them exuberant prices. And Jesus sees this. They're taking advantage of these people. They've turned it into a den of thieves and robbers, the house of God, the outskirts. It'd be like our narthex out there. They've turned it into a place of dens and robbers. And Jesus makes it clear that God's house is to be a house of prayer, like the last song the worship team just let us in, you know, so that he can do his miracles. He's a miracle worker. But if if the spirit of God is not here, of that presence of God, then that, that stops what God wants to do. He's a miracle worker, but we have no right to try to stop that. And sin will stop that, okay? And so he has to remove and destroy what's going on there because it is sin. I want you to know that. Now, Jesus himself was whipped. Do you remember that before his crucifixion? You might say, well, what, then if whip represents the idea of sin, I'm not, that doesn't make any sense to whip Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But remember the verse, he that knew no sin became our sin so that we might become his righteousness. Amen? There's interesting theological concepts going on here. So let me give you the ABCs as we prepare for communion and break this down. The A is Jesus comes in there and, and turns over the tables and has that whip and, and everybody's running, money's going everywhere. You can just imagine that, you know, and, and just it's, uh, picture Jesus like being the Hulk, you know, coming in there. Rah, just, I mean, it is going crazy. Everybody trying to run out of there, get out of the way. And so the leaders in the, in the text that we have today, it just says the Jews. It doesn't mean the Jewish people. It means the Jewish leadership of the church is what it means. They come to Jesus and they said, what authority? That's the A of our ABCs. By what authority are you doing these things? Now let's remember what authority our Lord and Savior has. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, starts with verse 18, 19, and 20. Jesus said in verse 18, Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And that's the Great Commission telling us now as his church to go into all the world, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to follow all the teachings of Jesus. Jesus has made it clear that he has all authority. Now, the authority was challenged here, the authority of the church establishment by Jesus. He's coming and saying he has all authority and a whip is in his hand. When did he make that whip? It says in the text that he made the whip. Well, if you look at the gospel of Mark of this story, you have Jesus coming to the temple, but he gets there late in the day. And so he just looks at the temple and it says that he just looks at the temple and then he goes and spends the night in Bethany. And the next morning he comes in and attacks the, the robbers and the den of thieves that they've made it into. I think that night is when he fashioned the whip he made it himself, a little scourge himself. I believe that's when he did that because that passage also talks about Jesus being hungry, sees a fig tree, and he goes to the fig tree to get some figs, but then there's no fruit. I mean, it's, it looks like it's in season, but when he gets there, there's no fruit. And so Jesus curses the fig tree. And then a little bit later, when they come back, the fig tree is withered up and the disciples are like, how did that happen? And they said, Jesus just cursed it and it just died right, right away. You know, how did that happen? It died because it had no fruit. Jesus passed judgment. Jesus whipped the tree, if I can use that symbolically, because it had no fruit. 
because it was not producing fruit and something that's not producing fruit must be pruned so that there is hope. And if there is no hope, it is destroyed. And that fig tree was destroyed. Now think of the symbolism here. So that has just happened. So Jesus comes in the gospel of Mark at this same story. And when he comes in, he just attacks all those that are, that are taking advantage of the people. And that brings them to the question of what authority do you have to do this? Remember now, after the temple is destroyed, Jesus explains that that building itself will be destroyed within that generation. And it was, we know, historically speaking, A.D. 70, that the Roman Empire destroyed the temple. It was destroyed completely and people were scattered. The dispersion was all over the place. It was just horrendous. A lot of people died. It was, it was if you look at that historically, it's, it's just terrible, absolutely terrible. Jesus prophesizes that, but makes it clear that now you and I, we are the temple of God. God. And the Holy Spirit that Jesus blesses us with when he ascends on high and the Holy Spirit comes, his love, his power, and his grace lives with inside this temple. And if you were with us last week, we talked about since we are the temple of God, you don't do terrible things with this body. You don't do things against the Holy Word of God with this body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 7. As a matter of fact, it makes it very explicit. You would not join this temple with a harlot or a prostitute. You don't do those things. This is a holy vision vessel that contains the Holy Spirit inside of us. Can you say amen? amen? That's who you are now, who you are. Now, the B of our ABCs, Jesus comes to that place, and it's business as usual. I mean, it's not like they were doing this just one-time event, and they were taking advantage of people. This is just who they were they had been doing this for a long time, and it evolved. I'm sure that somebody that, uh, uh, you know, took advantage of somebody a little younger in life and then saw that others are doing it and making a profit and a little bit more, and eventually, you know, if you keep doing wrong, your conscience doesn't even bother you anymore. That, you know how that is in life. And so this was business as usual that Jesus is destroying. It's not like these folks did not get a fair chance. They had many opportunities to turn from their wicked ways, but it had just been business as usual usual. That'll be the B of our ABCs. This last week, uh, Patty Pott, one of our leading prayer chairpersons, does our prayer chain. Lisa Marlett goes over, and I told you, praise for the prayer pews. Irene Brew and myself, we were sitting down, and Irene prays over our altar and, and through our Stephen Ministries. I'm just mentioning the, the three names while I was meeting with them. We were praying together. We began to talk about Elijah in the Old Testament. Now, you remember Elijah's story. We've preached on him before, one of the great prophets of God in the Old Testament, and that uh, they were trying to have revival like we need today. And so he prayed that there would be no rain and that uh, there was no rain for over three years. And then he prayed that there would be rain and the rain came. That's an incredible miracle. Remember what we sang a few moments ago? Miracle worker. And Elijah thought that would revive the people. And then he prayed and called fire down from heaven, if you remember the story. That is a tremendous miracle. And then they destroyed the evil prophets of the day, over 400. That is a miracle. And then they come into Jerusalem, and one queen says to him, I'm after you for all that you've done now. And it says that he turned around and ran away. And that's what we were discussing this last week, saying, that just doesn't make any sense. I mean, anybody that can pray and it doesn't rain, pray that it does rain after three years. Pray for fire to come down from heaven. It comes from heaven. Pray against the evil uh, direction of their country and, and all the evil prophets are destroyed. And then one voice, one voice makes you run. Makes no sense. So you got to look at the full context. And as he's running away, when God speaks to him, God says, you know what? You think you're alone, but you're not. You're not alone. He said, there are 7,000 in the area of Jerusalem that have not bowed down to these false prophets. The reason I believe that Elijah was running away with that one voice from the queen is because, dear friends, he thought when he came into Jerusalem, revival would take place because fire had come down from heaven because there had been no rain. Now there was rain. The evil prophets are gone. He thought everybody would come in and it would be revival. People would be excited. They would be jumping up and down and praising God and ready to get rid of that evil queen and just, just follow the word of God and to be the people God wants them to be. But it was business as usual. Come Monday morning, they're back going to work. You know, nothing's changed. Everything's just the same. Y'all remember 9-11? Church boomed for a little while. Then it went back the same. After this pandemic's over with, 
Church is going to boom a little while. And I bet you anything, it's going to go back to the same. Back to business as usual. So what in the world should we be doing? What in the world should the church be doing? We should be repenting of our sins and calling out. We should be proclaiming from the mountaintops, from the pews. We should be pushing the agenda that Jesus is Lord and that God is calling his church, his people to repent of their sins, to turn from their wicked ways. And we just need to be seeking the Lord with all of our heart. And that's not happening. That's not happening. Our focus in our churches today is on social issues. Social issues. Now, those are important. They are important, friends. I mean, you know, I don't think we should live in a polluted world. You know, I don't think, dear friends, that, that, that anybody should be racist. I don't think the issues of the day that, that seem to cause people turmoil and struggles should be ongoing. I think we should do everything we can to help them. But the call of the church of Jesus Christ is to proclaim the word of God and to tell folks to repent of their sins, their sins. I have about had enough of this cancel culture thing. You know what I mean? I just, I mean, really, I mean, in that, in that coming from the church, I know I'm going to have it out there in the world, but I don't want to hear that in the church. When you come to the church, you don't need to hear that kind of stuff. You need to hear Jesus. You need to hear the Word of God. You need to hear to repent of your sins and pray for others to repent of their sin. We don't hear that word sin anymore. It's just people don't say it. I've been reading so much about the division of the Methodist church and people, I was listening, uh, NPR had a, a lesson on it the other day. And so I tuned into that. I, a friend called me up and said, it's on right now. So listening and, and different people are talking about people making different decisions and going different ways and everybody has a right to do this and do that. But nobody talks about sin. <laughs> nobody ever even mentions that word. Nobody talks about cleansing the temple, Jesus with the whips, as if that's not even in the Bible. That's not the Jesus that we know, right? Our Jesus would never do that. That can't be my Jesus. He wouldn't cleanse my temple. He wouldn't do those things. Friends, as I begin to study, you know, when we look at history and we see mistakes, we as a nation, we as a people have made, we need to repent of our sins and move on. You cannot erase history. History will remind us that we need to repent and move on. Studying our founder, John Wesley, did you know in his journals, I have all of them in the office, studying him, he struggled with Native Americans. Did you know that? You know, and studied, uh, he came over here to minister and he was so much struggling with, number one, the Creek Indians, part of my ancestry, you know, because they were drunkards, he said. He said that, they're drunkards, you know. And so, and Wesley struggled in relationships. He ended up getting married and as far as we know from the journals, he did not take care of that bride. He lived separated from her, even though they never officially divorced. If that is all true, which is in the journals, I'm sure it is historically true. If you're going to cancel culture, you need to get rid of John Wesley. Just kick him out. Get rid of the Methodist church. Kick it out. How dare us have a church under a man that had those kind of feelings? I want you to know John Wesley was a man like you and me, and he repented of his sins. And God cleansed him. You don't need to remove Wesley. You need to remove the sin and call sin, sin. Black is black and white is white. Amen? Just call it what it is. (laughs) Call it what it is. Now, the C of our ABCs. When this all took place, it tells us that Jesus, so I can just imagine when he left there, and the disciples remembered that it said the zeal of his house will consume him. That'll be the C of our ABCs, consume him. And that's actually a quotation from the Old Testament, the book of Psalm, chapter 69, verse 9. Let me ask you a question. Does it still consume him today? What goes on in churches around our country, does it consume him today? If it does, my, oh, my, oh, my. My, oh, my, oh, my. So what do we do? We do what's right. I love the book of Philemon in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul realized that... uh, Onesimus, his main man, was a runaway slave. 
And he went to Onesimus and he said, you need to go back to Philemon. You got you to make this right. You got to go and make this right. Man, he said, I might make me a slave again. He said, but, but you ran away. I know that you've been a man of God, a brother to me, and I want you to be, and I'm sending this letter with you. That's going to, because I know this guy personally, and I'm, I believe he's going to set you free, and I'll pay whatever it is that needs to be paid, but you need to do what is right. And that's what happens. Christian, what do you need to do? Do what's right. You know what the next step is. The Spirit of God will show you. The reality is God loves us all. Do you remember the story of Jonah and the, and the big fish, Jonah and the whale, and how that Jonah eventually did what God wanted him to do as the fish spit him out on the shore? He went to the Ninevites. None of Israel liked the Ninevites because they, they persecuted the Jewish people, but God loves those people just like he loves the Jews. He loves everybody. He loves you. He loves me. He loves everybody. He loves everybody in this world. He does. He gave his life for all of us. But what did the prophet Jonah preach? When he was walking down Nineveh, did he say, hey, everybody, turn to God. He loves you. He cares for you. Everybody, come on. We're having fried chicken data by place and get you to come to church. We got a wonderful worship team. You'll just have a good time. We'll talk about bullywink bullfrog, and we'll just, I mean, we just want to love on you and, and just to just have a good old time. Is that what he said? That's not what he said. He went down the streets and he said, repent. <laughs> God loves you, but repent. He is asking you to repent of your sins. Repent. The United States of America needs to repent. <laughs> the United Methodist Church needs to repent of their sins. I need to repent of my sins. You need to repent of our sins. That repentance is the cleansing, the purification, the whip of Christ, cleansing us, freeing us, drawing us unto him. We're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. We all are. And none of us are righteous. No, not one. But as we seek the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I'm to help me. He will. He will. Can you say amen? amen? Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for being right here. Now guide us as we receive the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Do we have the creed back there, Brother Chip and Bill, that we can put on the, the area here? Let's share together our creed. Can you do that with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living on the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. Right hand of Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Y'all needed to repeat that, okay? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I see our young folks coming in. I want everybody to take your communion cup. Again, this is up to the families if you would like your children to participate. The communion cup is a precious precious opportunity. It's more than a symbol. It's an experience in Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us a mandate. That's why before we have Easter, we have what's called Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy is a Latin word that means mandate. We have a mandate to receive this sacrament, to love our brothers and sisters, to wash one another's feet, not literally, but to serve one another. That's the idea of true repentance seeking the Lord with all of our hearts. The Bible tells us on the night before Christ was crucified, he took the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and offered it to his disciples and said, this represents my life being poured out, my blood being poured out for you. Take and drink and remember me. 
Dear friends, if you have your communion cup, if you have not opened it yet, if you have the gluten-free at the bottom is the wafer, if you'll open that plastic, and if it's at the top, it's in that first layer of plastic. If you'll just be patient, you can open that first layer of plastic and hold the bread if you've not received it yet. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. Now the cup, if you'll pull back, and I know it's difficult sometimes, just hold it firm. The cup of the covenant, take and drink and remember me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We're not worthy of the sacrament, but you have given us a promise that as we seek your face, we repent of our sins, for we are sinners that need a Savior, that you will cleanse our temple. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. As they're coming up to lead us in our closing today, you can take the chalice when you depart in a few minutes and drop that in the receptacles at the door uh, as you exit. If any of you had trouble opening it up or getting the, the bread out, please understand that we, all of us have had trouble with that, and we do understand. The offering plates are back there as well. If you want to place an offering there or your prayer cards can go there as well. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the prayer cards will end up going uh, on our prayer chain. We have quite a few that are connected with our email prayer chain. And if you're not connected, if you will leave a note even in the offering plate of your email address, and we would love to put you on that email prayer chain. We encourage you to sign the prayer quilt when you depart today. Amen. We encourage you to uh, stop by the Welcome Center and talk to some of the folks about the youth camp. We encourage you to uh, pick up a prayer bear if you have somebody that could use a blessing and just give it to them. We encourage you if you have a personal, personal prayer request, put it on the prayer wall, and that's between you and God. We just want to always enhance the prayer ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's all rise together, and our team will lead us at the cross. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down
Father, we thank you for at the cross. Father, that was where your son died for all of our sins. Oh, Father, what a gift to all of us. Father, the cross is where we can come to lay down our burdens. Oh, Father, and, and pick up some grace. Amen. Father, we thank you for the message today. Amen. Father, the whip. Father, we say amen to the word. Father, as we prepare to leave this place, Father, we ask that you guide our footsteps. Father, we ask that you keep a head of protection around all of us. Father, help us to keep the whole armor of God amen. till we meet again. May all of God's people say amen. 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 Leave at your neighbor. We'll see you next week. <laughs>